you're overweight, when you're the fat guy, you know you are, but you live in this sort of self-imposed denial. You look at yourself in the mirror and you think, how did I let myself get to this point? I don't like who I've become. This isn't who I am. I'm living an unfulfilled life and I'm watching my life's dreams just fade away. Then you finally reach that moment when you're ready to take control. And that's when you know it's time to make a change. My name is Kenny Sailors. I'm 32 years old and I'm obese. But all of that is about to change. I'm about to do something that many would consider extreme. For the next 40 days, I'm going to fast on absolutely nothing but water. I think that's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, he's got to have vitamins, he's got nutrition. It, it's something that's not health, healthy for him. In the long run, it could come back to haunt him. I don't know. Ooh, carrot juice is good, man. Holy crap. You got to taste it. I'm going to make him taste carrot juice. I've had the Sobe carrot orange stuff. Yeah, it's not the same. It's not real, man. This stuff is really fresh carrot juice. Is like, uh, it's like drinking. I've never had it, so. Drinking life. Um, you have to drink. You have to drink carrot juice, or any juice for that matter, fast because juices are living they're living things so whenever you uh whenever you juice you have to drink within like two minutes in order to get the full maximum effect of the vitamins and nutrients going to the body mm. and this coming from an overweight fat guy <laughs> who knows so much about nutrition okay first things first before i decided to do the fast i wanted to go back home see my family, visit some old friends in my hometown of Greenville, Texas. Greenville's your typical small town USA. It's definitely a far cry from Los Angeles. Growing up, I went to Greenville High School, attended Greenville First Assembly, worked at Greenville Hardware, and ate lots of Greenville food. started walking. He liked sports and he liked to play football and he never met a stranger. He was always quite friendly with everybody. When he was in high school, he was very thin, almost frail looking. I never thought that he would ever gain this much weight. So when he started gaining weight, then he started this coughing. <coughs> okay. Kenny said that he was going to go on a long fast. I wasn't sure if he could do it, but I knew that because he has determination that he probably could. So what is fasting and why did I choose this? Simple. Fasting has been the most proven way to detox the body and give it time to heal. Throughout history, people of many faiths, including Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and most Eastern religions, have used fasting as a healing process for spiritual purification and communion with God. Why 40 days? 
Well, 40 seems to be a number that is repeated in most of the holy books and specifically in the Bible over and over and over, so it sounded like the right number for me. I knew the smart thing to do before I started was to get a medical team on board. So I did my research and called lots of doctors, but none of them wanted to take me on. Finally, I found a place in Marina Del Rey that agreed to meet with me. Come on in, Kenny. It sounds like you've got some uh, interesting life-changing plans. Yeah, I want to hear more about it. Yeah. I've been doing research over the past year about what, what ways to really reform my health and to try to get me back on track and everything. And so, okay. uh, and then that's when I came across fasting, All just right. a water fast. And a so, water fast? <clears throat> yes, a water fast for 40 days. <laughs> and, Wait, uh, you're talking about doing a water fast for 40 days? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. very extreme, Kenny. Yeah. A f water fast for 40 days is probably the most extreme type of fasting you can do. And for the longest amount of time that anyone should possibly attempt it. And you shouldn't attempt it without medical supervision. I can tell you that straight off. The big thing for me, the passion for me, is about the obesity epidemic in the world. In mm -hmm. my research, that's what really stood out to me. The numbers are astronomical, I mean, about how many people are overweight. According to the CDC, the number of morbidly obese across the United States has skyrocketed to over 30% in the last 20 years. Not only that, but what is obesity costing you and me, the taxpayer? Well, if you break down the cost and compare them to other taxpayer expenditures, you can see it adds up really quickly. To fly our president for one year in Air Force One cost us $500 million. All costs associated with illegal aliens in California alone cost taxpayers $9 billion a year. If you add up the money spent on the No Child Left Behind policy, it's a staggering $23 billion a year. And all costs associated with drunk driving, a whopping $24 billion a year. So how does obesity stand up to these numbers? Well, when you add up increased insurance costs, loss of work due to obesity conditions, increased Medicare and Medicaid costs, it comes to $80 billion a year. That's more than all of those other programs combined. So that made me start thinking, wow, I'm, I'm one of those statistics. Because... Well, let, let me say this at least, Kenny, because I applaud you for at least taking some steps to improve your health. The number one thing, though, should be you improving your health you need to get uh, medical supervision. So we're gonna introduce you to um, the medical doctor that we have on staff here. Okay. You're gonna need to get a full physical, um, some right. blood work. Make sure you're healthy enough to do something right. like an extreme fast. Yeah. On, a, you know, on a personal note, I'm, I'm, you should be really proud of what you're doing. I mean, it's, it's so difficult. I don't know anyone other than you know, some, some very serious medical practitioners who attempted what you're doing. What you're doing is, is difficult and you should be very proud that you're taking such a step to get healthy. I know it is extreme, and, and, but sometimes you have to go to extremes to be extremely healthy. So. I think they're on board. It's gonna be, that's going to be great. In order to get through this, I'm going to need some help. I'll need my friends around me to keep me motivated and to get me through my moments of weakness. I'll be staying part of the time with my good friends Paul and Sonia. Sonia's been wanting to fast for a while and thought now would be the perfect time to do it, and I couldn't agree more. Paul, he'll continue to eat a lot of tempting food and stay magically skinny, which honestly really isn't fair. I'll also be staying with some of my other friends, Jeremy and Elena. I've known them for a long time and I know they can put up with my ridiculous shenanigans. This is John and Matt. They're helping me document this entire adventure. Now you're not seeing double, they're actually identical twins and I really have trouble telling them apart, which is always fun. The rules are like this. Uh, obviously no food for next 40 days, uh, no gum, no candy of any kind, no mints, uh, nothing, just water for, for that whole time. Uh, also, I'm going to be keeping record of, um, of how many times I go to the bathroom, uh, how many bottles of water I drink. This little baby here, the wallet, anytime I'm left alone uh, without supervision around, uh, there to take my wallet. Whoever's near me, besides, well, so whoever's near me that I know, not just somebody, I can never be alone with my wallet and with access to money. And so are you nervous? Very uh, optimistic. I'm very optimistic about it. I'm actually really excited about it. I'm, I'm you know, as, as, uh, as emotionally attached as I've become to this, I'm ready to let it go. Huh. Kenny, time to get up. First day you're fast. Day one begins. <laughs> Um, this is 
from Paul and I. A little gift to start off your journey. Oh, very nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, see it fits around your big head. Yeah, oh boy, this is one going to actually go over the head. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Okay. Well, I know one thing. Once it goes on, it ain't going on. Oh, my eye. Okay, right oh, well, hopefully my head will lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. So I got my juice. You got your water? Oh, yeah. Here we go. I'm starting my, my synthesis 40 day juice fast. Sonia, it's the 40 days juice fast, but why did I do that? I just feel a little safe. Thanks, Katie. Welcome. Anything <laughs> I can do. Yeah. So here we go. Here, cheers. Today one. Whee! Mmm, oh. just like candy. Mmm, <laughs> just like water. Huh? I'm going for my first physical now, my first weigh in. Honestly, I've been terrified of the scale for years. I'm afraid of knowing what my weight is. I always thought I was like five nine and three quarters, but apparently I'm not that tall, which is sad, because that's not tall. I'm so ashamed of my height and my weight and pretty much everything. <laughs> and I got my own little pretty robe that they actually have to find one that's a bigger size because this one will not fit me, will not fit around my big fat belly. <laughs> Hi, Penny. How are you? Yeah. Doing good. <laughs> good to see you. So we're going to measure everything and everything because the, when you stress your body the way you are going to stress it, fasting completely, mm -hmm. uh, there will be a lot of physiological and biochemical changes in your body. But I want you to be aware there is always risk for what you're trying to achieve. Right. Okay? Okay. So it's not an easy deal that you're... Yeah. This is a major issue, okay? Right. All right. right. Yeah. So we're going to do your body measurements. Your weight is 315.2 pounds. 53% of that weight is made out of fat. 53% so basically, a little over your half of your weight is made out of fat, huh? Wow. Mm -hmm. And your body mass index is 47.8, where in fact we shouldn't see you greater than 28, you know, BMI of 28, you know, maybe 30 maximum. 30 maximum. Yeah. And your lean body mass is 147 pounds. The ideal thing, Kenny, right now is that we should be very close watching mm -hmm. your progress and okay. assessing where you are. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. Oh, well, thank you. My <laughs> pleasure. Thank All you, right. Kenny. Right. Well, we'll All the see. best. Yes, thanks. Yeah? Well, uh, okay, so I had my first physical today. Basically, 53% of me is fat and 167 pounds of fat on me. That's what it is. So. I, w I knew it was big, but man, that's really bigger than I thought. So, so anyhow, so this is uh, day one, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens day two. And I've got a headache already starting, uh, becoming pretty bad actually. So, so anyhow, so day one, physical over. You know, good news, I'm pretty healthy. Bad news, I'm really fat. <laughs>
I was broken. And she never gave me a reason, just ended it. I didn't know how to handle that. I didn't know emotionally what to do with that. There was no closure for me. And from that point, over the next year, I gained over 80 pounds. I ate and I ate because food doesn't reject you. Most of the weight that I have now is from that, that breakup. But thank the Lord I'm through it. Now I'm here, my mind is more clear and I'm ready to move forward. Talking about my breakup was really tough. I've been pushing it to the back of my mind for so long that finally facing it was actually a release. Losing her had such an impact on me. It completely changed the way I dealt with my emotions. That's something I need to work on if I'm going to change the way I deal with pain in the future. I just can't keep running to food any longer. And so, mark down. This is the fourth time I've gone to the bathroom today uh, because I'm going to the bathroom right now. And I'm going to be talking about something that Dr. Galley told me to go pick up. Are these things... Uh, they're keto sticks. You pee on the little end thing and then you gotta correlate it with the side here. Uh, this tells you if your body has gone into ketosis or not, which this means nothing, and this means you're heavily into ketosis. It's ketosis time! Woo! See here, let's see. The ketone stripped didn't change really any color. It, well, it changed that color, which means it's negative, which means my body has not even started in the ketosis yet. Pretty natural, I guess. It wouldn't expect me to be instantly into ketosis from not eating for one day. So, um, there we go. Should I collect these, you think? to go for a run, especially on a day like this, but I gradually became embarrassed and self-conscious about my body, so I eventually stopped. You know, it takes a lot of courage and self-confidence for a person to just not care about what other people may think or what they might say and just go out there and do the things normal people do. Now I'm more embarrassed by the fact that I cared that much to let it stop me for that long. I do cardiac and pulmonary. Over the years, things that you've seen that we're eating, how we're eating, things such as this. I'm a firm believer that you can damn near eat anything that you want. It's what you do after. I still feel it's input. I think it's exercise. And also, I think a lot of it comes back to psychological. There is a criteria that states when gastric bypass should be done clinically. We are doing them now in 13 and 14-year-old kids. When you have a kid 13, 14, that's weighing 325 pounds, you've yeah. got a problem. Gastric bypass should only be for those that psychologically cannot handle their weight. In other words, obesity is not a reason to have a gastric bypass. It's very simple. What goes in comes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless you have glandular trouble. And right. that's one-tenth of percent of people that have weight problems. come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, but only a small percentage actually have some sort of medical reason they're overweight. As for everyone else, it's mainly due to their emotional eating, lifestyle habits, or both. Ask any of them why they think they're overweight, they're going to tell you they're big bone, it's genetics, or something like that. Now, ask those same people what size their great-grandparents were, their great-great-grandparents, and I bet they'll tell you they were all average size. Ask anyone over 65 how many obese people they remember seeing as a child, and they'll tell you there were very, very few. I was uh, negative on ketones. We're gonna see how I am today. Hmm. I'm putting this in my mouth. This is before I pee on it. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, just peed on this thing. Let's 
check it out. Uh, the other day I was here, I was negative. Let's see where I am today. It's not quite the moderate yet, so I'm still under the small category. So there we go. Ketone sticks, don't leave home without them. Day three has come to an end. about um it's about uh 3 30 4 in the morning and uh, i just uh i woke up and i'm just like oh man I'm not feeling so well right now i've got like a headache and my stomach is like growling like crazy so i'm just really hungry and i'm Right about now, I'm, I'm thinking, man, is this, was this a good idea? And man, I'm only a few days in. It's tough. I mean, it's tough. I'm already feeling it, but hey. Man. All right, I forget, I gotta try to go back to sleep. Day five is the most difficult so far. The thought of giving up has actually crossed my mind. What stops me is realizing what my life's become and what it's going to continue to be if I let it. When you're ready to make a profound change in your life, you have to face your fears. You have to keep pushing yourself and imagine how different your life could be if you only try. Your first colonic. My first colonic, yeah, I know. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't want to think. On <laughs> a colonic. Yeah, it shouldn't be too bad, I guess. They said they'll relax me a little bit, so I'm like, all right, good. My doctors advised me that since my digestive system was going to be inactive for so long, it was necessary for me to clean out my colon. Now, most people know as much about colonics as I do, which is practically nothing. The human colon is over five feet long, and the only way for it to fit into our body is by being bent and folded. After years and years of eating, pieces of food and waste become lodged in these folds, causing poor circulation, constipation, allergies, mood swings, just to name a few. Colonic hydrotherapy is an alternative medical process in which warm, filtered water gently fills the colon through the insertion of a small plastic tube. The water enters the crevices in the colon walls and removes pieces of waste. As the pressure inside the colon builds, the water is released and everything is evacuated through the hose. This process is repeated several times until the entire colon has been cleaned. Generally, patients need several colonics before all the waste is removed and they can start feeling the real benefits of a healthy colon. Something unspeakable is scheduled to occur and when it does, it will be a sort of relief. But just for one of us. tubing we use is thrown away. It's never used again. And this is a smaller tubing that we're going to be using. Okay, thank this, you. yes. <laughs> it's a small, <laughs> tiny one. It's, small, tiny it's very one. good. But everything in a colonic is breathing. Okay. Because sometimes we might want to get the water around some gas. What's the difference between colon cleanse and an enema? If you do an enema at home, you're probably only going to get up on the sigmoid side. And when I do a colonic, the reason they call it high is I can go all the way up across the transverse and all the way over here to the cecum. Oh, so I'm so getting the total cold. colon. Oh. It's hard to do that I unless you stand that. on your head. Now, when you're ready, Kenny, you turn on your side for me and look at the bathroom door, please. This is going to be a little unusual. Nobody likes this part. The best thing to do is just open your mouth and breathe through your mouth. Open your mouth, go ah, and gentle push. Ah, take your time, there's two valves. Valve of Houston, as a matter of fact, for Texas. Breathe, go ah. I'm sure glad you used the small one. <laughs> Good. A little tiny pillow, put your head there. Already going in, it's been going in. Take a deep breath, please. Good. Now the colon is closer to the back than the front, so the transverse runs along here, so sometimes if you get back aches, you know that it's your colon. I grew up in the land of all this guarded place. 
plastic bags, dirty soft drink cups, and candy wrappers. It won't hurt you, and it sometimes helps you have bowel movements. So that I'll be home Folks don't realize that <laughs> putting on the sh putting on shoes and tying shoes is actually a very trying ordeal. Are we really doing this all the way down? Yeah. Oh my God, advised me not to do any exercise at all during my fast. And of course, I didn't listen to him, and now I'm paying the price. Maybe I'm just trying to go too fast. Down, but not what losing about? weight is one thing. Losing body percentage yeah. fat and getting it's your yeah, getting your BMI to the right level is where you want to be. Yeah. Okay. BMI, not just the BM. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Mr. Comedian, how yeah, are you? Have a great job. Let's see. So all these years, I've been looking at myself. You know, I see myself in the mirror, and I, I you know, sometimes I stand there and I feel like crying because it's just like. Who is this person in the mirror? It's disgusting. It really makes me disgusted to look at myself. And when you look at yourself that way and you feel disgusted like by what you've become, then you know what? It, you got to do something about it. This is, this is just not something that's like, oh, hey, this is, you know, I'm big and fat, you know. No, it's I'm fat and now I've got to do something about it because I'm going to die young. I'm going to die. This is... The measurements that we took last week, and your weight went down from 315 okay. to 305, and that's simply because you were burning uh, muscle, okay. okay, instead of body fat. So that showed in your numbers. That's why your percentage of body fat number went up, even though uh, your weight went down. Okay? okay. Now where we're at is today, okay? Okay. So your weight is coming down still off of 305. Okay. All right. But what's even better is your percentage of body fat's coming down. It's coming down. Okay, so it's gone from 58 now down to 54. Very cool. All right? Yeah. So you've sort of crossed this threshold. How many overweight friends do you have compared to those that are yeah, in good shape? Two overweight friends. 
Okay. How do you have your close friends? What about family? How oh, many of your immediate my family? My whole family. <laughs> <laughs> Aunties, uncles, wow. and even parents. Now, what would you say is the the uh, most uh, commonly eaten thing? Do you have McDonald's or they eat yeah, McDonald's? McDonald's. Day 21 is a milestone for me, the longest I've ever gone without food. I never imagined I could feel this good by not eating. It's true what they say that you feel light and connected with God. It's almost euphoric. I'm feeling inspired, so I'm spending the day at my friend's place and getting into my music. Now that I'm not preoccupied with food all the time, it's really given me the ability to reevaluate my life, my priorities, my ambitions. I want to change my life. I've had so many dreams that I set aside and just didn't pursue because of my weight, because of my insecurities. Growing up, music was my life, my passion. One of my deepest regrets is not pursuing that path. I gave up on my dream when I gave up on myself. I can't let this weight interfere with all that anymore. I also hope that what I'm doing will somehow inspire others to know that they can face their fat and look beyond that, that barrier. If you believe in yourself, any dream is possible. As we go, day 21, which is supposed to be a turning point for everything. So, just see. There's nothing like going back to nature to help you get your mind off the fact that you haven't eaten for a month. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen today because my friends have invited me to a campground for a barbecue, which is my favorite kind of food. Boy, this is going to be tough. I'm beginning to wonder what kind of friends I have that would put me through this torture. And this is the first time in my whole entire life as a human. And life is something that's not a human. I don't know what that means, but... Uh, uh, that I've ever been in any camping situation where I was not eating. How does it feel? It sucks. I'm here to show you guys how to barbecue hot dogs. I do know barbecue hot dog well, from Iran. Well, last time I checked, uh, Iran's not known for their barbecue, but Texas is. Well, that's right. 30 days of fasting is trying to prove you could do it. It's barbecue for everybody, but he's not going to eat it. Oh, it feels good to even touch food. Mm -hmm. Is that the first time you touched food? It is. Feels good. These dudes look like the best hot dogs I've ever seen. So I was sitting there the other day and I thought, I was just curious. I said, well, I gotta figure out, I wanna see who, because uh, uh, there's gotta be a world record for fasting, right? Yeah. And so I just decided to go look online. So I went and typed in, looked online, and I saw that apparently David Blaine, he, when he hung up in the, the Times Square thing, oh, yeah. you know, he did it for 44 days. So some Russian dude did it last year and uh, for 50 days and so that's when i was like well you know what they can do it. i'm doing it 40 days i'm doing pretty good why the crap not go yeah for 55 just try to get the world record you know be kind of cool getting a guinness book of world records yeah. that'd be neat i thought the fast was supposed to turn me off to like greasy stuff and looking but man this dude looks delicious man <laughs> oh it smells so good man that's a lot of hot dogs <laughs> man and I can't have any of them. Corn and potatoes soup together. That's good. At least some Texas rum. Yeah, there is. Yeah, the mashed potatoes good. They look good too. Everything looks good. What am I talking about? Crazy people. I'm 
feeling it's time to give Paul and Sonia a break, so I'm going to go spend a few days at Jeremy and Elena's. They've heard about what I'm doing, and they're making an effort to change their old ways and to eat healthier. I haven't seen them in a while, so it's going to be good to catch up and get their perspective on things. everywhere on TV and movies and magazine ads I see it everywhere I go I just can't escape it the temptations are overwhelming especially with the smell of food cooking all around me now with Jeremy taunting me it's enough to make me want to run out the front door find the first fast food place I see and order half the menu food is like heroin to me my mouth waters as I envision eating all that greasy food I mean it's an addiction that's so hard to overcome because no matter what you have to eat to live. Dinner is served. <laughs> Round two. I'm so close to finishing, I just have to hang in there. I've been doing some research and have really started to understand the severity of this obesity epidemic. I wondered if any of our elected officials would be willing to talk to me about what they're doing to get this situation under control. But I quickly found out how much they cared. President Clinton's bosses, Arnold Schwarzenegger, White House Office of Media Affairs, you have reached the scheduling office of the Hillary Clinton. In order to expedite your call, please select from the following options. Please press 4. Please press 1 now. Your call will be transferred. Governor's office. Uh, yes, can I speak to someone in the scheduling department, please? I had submitted a request uh, for an interview about a month and a half ago to two months ago. Okay. I'm calling about a scheduling request that I, uh, or an interview request that I had submitted about a month and a half ago. How about that? Please hold for the following option. Hello? President Clinton's office. Uh, yes, I'm calling about a, uh, a interview request that I sent in about a month and a half ago. Well, all right, actually, you're connected to the scheduling department right now, so let me turn you over to press. When did you submit? Uh, about a month and a half, two months ago. Uh, uh, I couldn't uh, personally identify uh, what happened to it or what stage it is during the process. Okay. Um, but if you'd like to fax it to us again okay. and mark it urgent, then that might, uh, oh, okay. yeah, that might be helpful. Okay, let me talk to people in that department, and okay. hopefully we can get back to you maybe by the end of the week. Um... Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't handle the scheduling uh, stuff, but, um, you know, I can transfer you over to that department. That'd be great. Like, yeah, that'd be great. You know, hold on a sec. <laughs> Hello, Pam. This is Kenny Sailors. Uh, we spoke about a month ago uh, in regards to an interview request for uh, Vice President Al Gore for a documentary about the obesity epidemic. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your call again. Oh yeah, good day, mate. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. <laughs> I discovered today while putting on my my pants, these pants were tied on me, very tied on me whenever I first began, and now they're extremely baggy. Uh, so I've apparently lost a lot of weight in my legs. I had pretty chunky legs again. And also, there's how much weight has gone down on my hips from where that's I was really. I mean, that's a lot. I, I'm actually pretty shocked about that myself, dang. <laughs> yeah, and I have a long way to go still. I have a lot of days left, so that's excellent. But the greatest part is, I never have to wear these pants again. That's because right. <laughs> <laughs> you got a whole new wardrobe. I know, gotta go buy new clothes now. Baggy jeans. I know. See, I got my necklace, and I got the baggy pants. This is my gangsta starter kit, yo. Call me Kate. What's up? K Dog. Straight up, players. Don't be hating on me. I talked to some people on the streets to get their views on the subject of weight. I've lost 30 pounds in the last two months. Really, awesome. man? That's excellent, man. You mind uh, doing what? Like yeah, how did you do that? Out or? Change my eating style. Eating? And... Uh, from eating the way you were to eating healthy, what's the hardest thing you found that's being a change? Just not waking up at night and grabbing the wrong things. You know, instead of grabbing a sandwich or something like that, I'll take a piece of fruit or yeah, smart, you know, yeah. grapes or whatever fruit. I, I started buying more stuff like that. More, uh, more fish. Oh, that's great. Uh, what do you think, in your honest opinion, about a guy doing a 50-day, 55-day fast? 
setting a world record. I think it's great, you know, if you live through it. It was difficult to get people to talk on camera about obesity unless they themselves were thin or were in the process of losing weight. It made me realize how afraid and uncomfortable people are about this issue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's still so bad eating in front of Kenny. <laughs> but it has to be done. It looks obvious they feel very bad about it. Is there yeah. a, no, you're done with that crust? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd get so tired of water. But when it's all you have, you just really get sick of it. It's weird. Like, when you're just around people, people talk about food all the time. I would venture to say that, oh, 70 to 75% of everyone's conversation revolves around food. And I know that sounds like a far-stretching statement to make, but, man, when you're not eating... Everything related to food <laughs> jumps out at you. And then when people talk about it, everywhere we go, people are like, oh, I like this, I like that. You know, it's just really, it's, it's crazy. I'm at my breaking point. I'm physically, emotionally, and spiritually exhausted. How much longer can I keep doing this? I'm almost at the end of it, or I would be, but now I'm trying to break a world record? I'm a way, well way into the whole uh, fast now. I mean, I'm like, I'm nearing on, I don't know, 30-something days. <laughs> you lose count after a while, even though I keep track of it all. I just, you know, I don't know. But today I went out with Jeremy and Elena, and we played uh, we played tennis. I was so exhausted that when I got back, I just I just crashed out. I just took a shower and laid down, and just been like, blah. I mean, I can barely even walk up the stairs here. I'm so tired. You know, I vomited, and I'm like, what's there to vomit? I've got nothing in my stomach. I'm like, you know, and it was weird because it was like, uh, it was like pink, like, I guess it was just stomach acid is all I did, but, but so I, it's a word of caution out there is I gotta, I gotta make sure not to, to uh, go crazy like that anymore. I need to really be careful because, you know, it hit me today. I was like, man, I've done, you know, I gotta be careful in the exercise. What am I doing? Have I lost sight of my goal? Is going for the world record really more important to me than my health, than my well-being? What am I trying to prove to myself? These past few days, I've been reevaluating my life in the direction I've been going. I've realized that I've put off pursuing a music career for way too long. Songwriting is my outlet. It's my way of expressing my emotions, good or bad. I'm going back to doing the things that make me feel good about myself, and I'm going to pursue my dream. Okay, the nurse is on her way up. Okay, so we're going to have to get you in the chair. Are you ready for your yeah, well, I know. I'm, I'm so excited. excited. I, <laughs> I told you, you might grow, though. We should measure you after. That's one thing that might actually be a nice little side effect. Go ahead and step off. And, ladies and gentlemen, 274.4. So, well, I mean, I've lost 41 pounds. I got a lot of excess still to go. Wow. So. Your body mass index is now 41.6. Oh, my friend, you are going in the right direction. Yeah. All right. 41 pounds. That's pretty impressive, huh? Yeah. Well, that's fabulous. Yeah, I saw, I saw a magazine the other day. Uh, it, was, uh, it was on there, and the cover says, she lost 30 pounds in three months. I was like, ah. <laughs> so your, your body mass index when you started was about 48, okay. which is pretty extreme. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's down to 41.6. Oh, so you're good. doing tremendous. So good. Good. The fat was nearly 58%. That's where I was getting that number uh, from. And now that's down to about 50%. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're doing amazing That's still a lot, progress. but it's better. <laughs> I am utterly amazed at how well you're doing. Yeah, I well. really am. I mean, I, I think it's great that we're doing these treatments, but it's, yeah. like, it's a lot attributed to you. Yeah, well, I, I, I'll be honest. I'm quite shocked myself. <laughs> and, and what is this about trying to break the record? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just want to, yeah, I just want to go in and... Uh, it was 50, it's 50 days. So I figured, well, I'm doing 40, and I'm doing good. I'm not like, you know freaking out about it or anything. You right, know, so. and now so you're going to push it to? 15. 15 more days, yeah. So a total of 55 55 days. Five days uh -huh. of water fasting? Yeah. 
Might as well go to an extreme with it and, you know. That's stunning. Yeah. I know, of course, we're going to have to get some clearance with uh, Dr. Golly. And right. <laughs> make, no, really, we'll, we'll check you out. Yeah. Make sure everything is good. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say, I think you're doing amazing. Well, thank Absolutely you. amazing. <laughs> and if it was anyone else in any other condition, there's no way they could push for that record. Yeah, but no. But because I, of where you're at, I think you could do it. Yeah. Day 40 is now come and gone. And <laughs> so what I do, uh, so Sonia went and made me a nice little uh, 15 more days to the world record chart. So, so tomorrow I get to begin my day 41 to my final 55 days to break the record. So this is the, the new addendum to the thing. I'm getting near the end of my fast and Sonia's already finished with hers, so we decided to arrange for a group of friends to come together and talk about everything we've been dealing with and learning about these past several weeks. Whenever I told people I was going to go fasting for 40 days, they're like, what, are you crazy? Or, you know, even I had a doctor tell me, so do you have a death wish? <laughs> you know? How did that affect you? Did it? Oh, great, but I, mean, I feel so good now, and I lost 40 pounds, and I still had to make Paul food, and <laughs> I was never starving, but on the fifth day, I really wanted fried chicken, <laughs> and then that kind of went away. And but I think it's because I kept watching TV and I was watching Food Network commercials. <laughs> commercials. <laughs> Overweight, you're vulnerable to people in mm -hmm. public that don't even know you, and mm -hmm. they'll judge you or say comments to you that are so hurtful that you don't really, you know, they don't really know. You already know this about yourself. You don't need to hear it. And right. Just, Does it make you more unsocial? That's what I want to know. Does it? Do you feel like maybe I shouldn't go out? Imagine what happens to the kids. That's what Let's talk about thinking. that. Let's talk about, you know, a person's yeah. overweight. So the discipline they have in the refrigerator reflects on their kids. Absolutely. So you know, that learned behavior that we were talking about. Yeah. I think. As you start letting yourself go mentally, you start saying, well, it's okay. Is that yeah. what you did in your yeah. mind? You, well, exactly. you convince yourself. I start saying, what's another hamburger? Yeah. I already weigh this much. If I eat one more, yeah. it's mm -hmm. easy. You know, and I'm not worried about it. I'll, I'll just eat one more, and then I'll start tomorrow. I can't tell you how many Mondays I've had in my life. I'm going to start on Monday. So I think after today, I will change my way. You guys see the inspiration. Hollywood attracts tourists from all over the world. I was curious what they thought about the eating habits of Americans. Boulevard. Yeah, I think that you've got a lot more choice, a lot more fast food. I don't know, your drink seems to be about this big. <laughs> the gallon. It's like this. It's like, how can you drink that? Can you fill it up? And then it's refillable. Yeah, yeah everything's yeah, refillable. Yeah. Exactly. That's not big in England. You buy a cup of coffee, drink it, that's it. You don't get a second. This one you got like a hamburger this big. Here you can have this one and this one and this one here. And everybody eats and eats and drinks and drinks. And vegetables. Yeah. Vegetables. You don't are, are, vegetables. Are, are. You eat a lot of vegetables. We eat a lot of vegetables. I think because there are too many McDonald's and too many shops that sell a lot of sauce. But uh, like in Italia, the food is very good. Cool. Oh. <laughs> I yeah, love, I love Italian food. Mm. We don't have ketchup, mayonnaise everywhere. Here, it's too many fried food. Yeah. I met a girl the other day whose father is both a cardiologist and a professional bodybuilder. I thought it would be really interesting to get his viewpoint on fasting and the best way for me to get healthy. You were your doctor first or the bodybuilder first? I was a doctor first, but I've always been interested in nutrition and sports, athletics, and so forth. Uh, I still am a cardiologist and internist, but I kind of look outside the box and uh, because really obesity is, is an epidemic and it certainly, certainly affects heart health. 
anyone that I that anyone that has gone through losing weight in the past, they have willpower. Dieting isn't so much the issue. It's learning how to really make changes that will affect you for the long term. You, you had this goal that you were going to lose weight, and yeah, it wasn't extreme, but it's not much different than what bodybuilders do when they bulk up and then cut down for a contest. So yes, it's extreme. And uh, no, I would not recommend it for the general population. Yeah, you will lose weight, but first you'll lose water weight, okay? And then as your metabolism comes to a screeching halt, you know, then you start losing muscle weight. Now, the more muscle you lose, the slower your metabolism. So you eventually will get to a point in which weight loss will end, okay? Now, you are a very strong individual and you are determined to go through this. You beat the odds. There's not many people I know that could be on a fast as long as you were and could be as successful as you were. This is one of the problems I have found in dealing with obese people as, in general is that you feel so deprived that you must bust out. So what these people do, then they'll overeat. And then they will feel like they're total failures because they screwed up again, and then they go off the diet and they overeat and they get fatter. It's just, if you look at people that have gone through yo-yo dieting time after time after time the common thread that i have found is that they always feel like failures they can't end up doing what they put their mind to do and they feel like they were failures so they might as well just be fat because i can't beat the i can't beat the odds sonia and i started this fast together supporting each other spiritually and emotionally this journey has really bonded our friendship for a lifetime I can't believe I finished my fast. Finished in 40? 40 days. Lost 40 pounds. I, I learned that um, I needed to take more time to take care of myself and to um, do what I need to do to stay healthy. It's, it's weird, though, that when, when you don't eat for so many days, you don't even think about food anymore. When you deprive yourself of food, you start realizing how much you you have control over your food. Um, growing up, I just remember at school, I, um, I got picked on. There was always the few, you know, kids that would pick on me and tease me. And getting into my adulthood, I, um, first of all, I didn't have, I didn't date. You know, I, I was always going out with my, my, my girlfriends and going dancing, and I was the one that was always holding everybody's purse. The funny thing is, I, I used to think um, if I could just have a guy in my life and, um, you know, that would, that would love me and um, take care of me, then I could go on and go after my dream, you know? Because I, I, I never really went after my um, my dream of being an artist. Because I thought, I have to take care of this first. And so I ended up going through relationships with guys. And I had this series of boyfriends that were not the greatest guys, you know. They weren't, they were more like, um, verbally abusive, not physically, but um, I had one boyfriend that used to tell me that I was borderline ugly, and um, he told me once, we were I'll never forget, we were at Magic Mountain, and we were in line for this ride, and he told me he was embarrassed to be seen with me. And I, boyfriend? Yeah. And, <laughs> and I still stayed with him because I thought, you know, I'm never going to find anybody else. And I think that a lot of women that are overweight think that. They put up with a lot more. They put up with a lot more because they don't feel that anyone else is going to want them. This is it, my last weigh-in. I'm so proud to be able to say that I reached a personal milestone. And now it's just time to find out how much my hard work's paid off. 
So um, he went from 315 down to 271. So what is that? Uh, how many would that be? That's 15? 40, that's 44 pounds. But the interesting pounds. thing about it... The what was his fat, yeah, percentage? Yeah, the percentage of body fat has come down dramatically because it was at 53%, mm -hmm. actually over 53%, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now it's down to 46%. Oh. So that's important. And then when you and look... how many pounds of fat did that Exactly, take? thank you, doctor. When you look mm -hmm. at the fat mass, he actually lost 40 pounds of fat and only 4 pounds of lean body mass. Not so bad. that's pretty spectacular. Wow. Preserving muscle mass is, yeah, uh, really is the name of the game. And really unusual. Yeah. So yeah. let's get you measured to see yeah. how yeah. toned this buff body is. Yeah, I know all these muscles I have. Yes. Mm. I'm looking forward to the measurements because all my clothes have been like this shirt was like spandex on me when we when I started. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the thing I was going to ask you about was the ketone strips of where uh, I've been peeing on them. Uh, but. Uh, it's gone up. It went up really high, and was, for for a long time it was really high, and then it started going down, and then up, and then down, and then the past like four or five days it's been like like trace amount. Just, that's good. Oh, so that's normal. That's very. Oh, okay. Size, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I've noticed because my pants don't fit me anymore. And for you to lose 50 some pounds? 44. 44 pounds? It's not bad, like a pound a day. My God, that's quite a bit. Yeah. So, so that is really, for each pound of fat, you need to spend 3,500 calories. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. So a man usually requires for daily maintenance anywhere between 28 to 32. 100 calories a day. So basically, you were living on your own fat. <laughs> there you go. What did you learn about yourself? What did I learn about myself? Mm -hmm. That I actually, if I put my mind to it enough, I can actually go and turn down food. That's one of the big things, because that's one you of the can. biggest problems that I, and I... And I think that's one of the things that most people uh, in the world and um, who are overweight, their biggest problem is they don't think they can say no to food. And see, and and I didn't, and I you always thought that, it. and I proved it because yeah. I did it. But you, you learn through the whole thing. You realize that you know if you put your mind to it enough that you can change your mind, you can change your body. I'm like, I finished, you know. Yay! I get to eat something tomorrow. Drink something beside the water. Take uh, 128 ounces in a gallon. Last day is here, 55 is here, and that is me, which I should cross out to him. <laughs> Yay, 55 days. 55 days, and I've drunk so much water. I will probably never be able to, to uh, drink anything but water again the rest of my life. <laughs> I probably could have gone 60 days, but that probably wouldn't have been a good idea. But I started getting, like, actually, towards the past few days, I started getting, like, pains in my uh, side. I'm going to do carrot apple. Jesus. Carrot apple yeah, sounds, sounds request. very good. Until it's over. Yeah. It's weird, actually, having something. Because I hadn't had anything, not even mint, anything. Just... The closest thing I even come to chewing anything was a few of straws. <laughs> when I get get stressed out, I chew straws and plastic things, <laughs> which is probably not a good habit. But how many of us are drinking? They all need to. Yeah, everybody should try. Here it is. Day well, 56 now, I guess, huh? <laughs> Cheers, I finished, yay! Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm full. <laughs> Man, that was you're bad. still alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Bright light getting bigger. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird. I mean, it tastes good. It's like, but it's weird. <laughs> What do you think? I think it's actually really good. Is the first time you had homemade carrot juice? Well, freshly squeezed carrot juice, you you can't get this stuff in bottles. It actually tastes really good. Hmm, well. That's that. It's good. There we go, guys. We're all done. I'm a little disappointed I didn't lose as much weight as I thought I would, but who can complain about losing like 50 pounds or 44 or whatever the crap was? (laughs) <laughs> five yeah, five something inches from my waist. No, I'm very happy. I certainly don't regret it. Anytime I lose any weight, I don't regret it. Huh? But the important thing is that what I disregarded in this because I went 55 days, because actually about you know a few days, quite a few days before this, my hunger actually came back, <clears throat> and I let it cycle again. And you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to let your hunger cycle again once you've been so long. Mm-hmm. But of course, I was going for a world record, so I thought I'd let do it, but that got into danger zone. Were there any uh, particular craving type of food? Or yeah, well, uh, pretty much anything with the word fast and food <laughs> to <laughs> join. Yeah. yeah, but then it's just making a conscious choice. Like, okay, I can have this fried chicken that's not good for me, or I can have the same basic ingredient of chicken baked and it's healthy for me, you know. But the good thing, I feel like now that I'm like at the starting line, you know? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And now I actually feel like, because now the fasting, I actually felt like I was doing something, you know, really crazy. Now I actually feel like I'm starting line. I can honestly say that this has been one of the toughest things I've ever put myself through. People are telling me, you're so much thinner. Yeah, I lost weight, not as much as I'd hoped to, but this wasn't meant to be some magic solution to all my problems. What's most important is that I set a goal for myself, I made the effort, and as hard as it was, I didn't give up. I didn't give in. When people taunted me with food or told me it was impossible, I never gave up on myself, and I never will again. To believe in yourself and to have faith is worth everything, especially when you face the thing that has kept you down and kept you from truly living. And then you conquer it. You know, I once heard it said that it's never too late to be who you might have been. And now, for the first time in years, I know I can be that person. Thank you.